Hi, I'm Peter Chase, and my wife Brenda and I would like to join Maranatha Baptist Church. We want a place where we can be held accountable and also to um, be edified and help to edify others to help each other grow. I was brought up in a non-Christian home. We did go to church, but it, it's what I've since found out was part of the most liberal denomination in America. And um, so I never heard the gospel. And um, I remember a couple of things like, at one point we made some sort of field trip to, a, to another church that was probably 60 miles west of where I grew up, which was in Arlington, Mass, outside Boston. Um, and I heard them make mention of the second coming of Christ. And I'd never heard that before. And that always stuck with me even to this very day. Like, that just aroused my curiosity. And obviously from what I've described, there was no real gospel background at all, except a couple little hints along the way. And um, I used to wonder, you know, why does everybody make such a big deal about Jesus? I never, you know, that's how ignorant I was. And I eventually just stopped going to church and I went to college, which was Ohio University in Athens. And again, I was dead in trespasses and sins. I first began to follow Christ in uh, December of 1973. It was Christmas night, 1973. and. Um, wound up staying up most of the night with my roommate with whom I worked also, and uh, um, he shared with me the gospel. And it was a fairly long conversation. I remember asking questions like, what about this, what about this? But then after a while, I began to realize that whatever he was talking about, I was on the outside and I wanted to be on the inside. And out of all that conversation, I don't remember any of my questions, except all I do remember is John 3.16, where it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not, have, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I wanted everlasting life. I admit at that time, I, I didn't understand everything. Uh, you know, he didn't really confront me with the fact that I'm a sinner. Uh, that came in the ensuing months. So we started attending uh, Athens Bible Church where we were for many years. As we sat under the word, uh, I say we because uh, my future wife Brenda got saved like a month later. We had known each other as unsaved people and, and so we began to realize that there are things in our life that need to change. And, before I was a Christian, of course, I went to OU and I was caught up in that lifestyle. And the older I get and the longer I'm a Christian, I, I'm grieved at how wicked I actually not just was, but still am in my flesh. Because like Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. I become more aware of sin that maybe I wouldn't have thought was an issue, you know, years ago. So in one sense, I actually feel more sinful because I'm more and more aware of what constitutes sin. And just thank you. Well, like in 1 John, it says, the blood of Jesus Christ literally keeps on cleansing us from all sin. Now that's not an excuse to go sin. Like Paul said in Romans, we don't sin that grace might abound. But then in 1 John again, it says, but if any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So it's like Satan can go accuse me of something. He's probably right, but Jesus will say, yes, but I died for that sin. Now I don't, haven't arrived, don't get me wrong, but I, I think I am learning just to depend on God. And that's really the whole Christian life, is learning not to walk in our own strength, not to lean our, on our own understanding, like Proverbs says, but in all our ways to acknowledge Him. And that's, 
That's one of my favorite little half verses. In all your ways acknowledge him. I'm Peter Chase, and that's my story of grace.